Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a car for Minecraft and uh, basically um, use it in M Creator. So uh, I had some questions about how I basically texture the, the vehicles and stuff like that. Um, I'll do a quick tutorial in the future on how to do that, uh, particularly with a block bench. It could use its own video. But uh, for now, uh, this is basically just for the actual, um, the actual uh, vehicle itself. So as you can see, the location where the player is going to be sitting is the same as the boat. Uh, if you haven't watched the boat tutorial, I suggest you go back and do that. It's a great video. It uh, shows you how to make watercrafts and stuff like that. So uh, one, a couple notes I should probably add though is if your vehicle is too big, has a lot of cubes and stuff like that this isn't an, enough cubes to basically um, make an issue but uh, if you have like over a thousand cubes or something like that you're going to uh, run into a few issues with it not running properly uh, it's just uh, too big for either M Crater or Minecraft to handle so um, it's good for smaller vehicles uh, but um, larger vehicles not so much uh, I just basically used the um, the paint tool in the program to quickly make uh, this example, but uh, outside of that, it looks pretty good. Uh, this model will be available for download. Uh, you guys can use it all you want in your projects, and uh, just make sure to save your uh, texture if you make any changes to it and uh, when you have that all done you can export it so export Java entity so when you're actually making your project uh, if you click on new it should be under a modded entity uh, don't use a block bench model or a block bench legacy model um, it's has to be a modded entity version and uh, just export your Java file we have a car Java here one thing that I should probably note now is your texture, your uh, file name, and your mod identi model identifier name all has to be the same name for this to work with any entity, not just um, this particular model. Uh, I was reading recently that uh, you'll run into some issues with um, your actual model and everything like that if they're not all the same so um, yeah so that's basically good we have all the files we need uh, so I'm just gonna save that and we have the files up here I also made it a icon for a basically a spawner item and what we need to do now is open down creator I think it's already open and uh, I'm just going to go over some of the stuff that I have all set up in this workspace. Uh, the entity itself is the first thing that we're going to be looking at. Um, I should probably note that if you need to import your files, uh, your texture goes under the other uh, when you import it. So other textures, if you go and import and then click other, then you can import your texture file. Your models go here. And uh, now we can go back to the car. So, like the boat tutorial, you can offset the the height of the entity to basically adjust where the player sits on that particular grid pattern. And uh, you might want to adjust your um, boundary box so it's a little bit one block um, thing. And that's about 0 0.5 because it's a radius. Uh, so it's going to be, um, I, th I think it's going to be like a... A solid thing I'm not sure if that's exactly how it all works but it's worth giving a shot if not then just set it to one and then you should have a larger hitbox um, I noticed that it was set to 0 0.6 uh, when first starting so that might be radius I don't know and then your shadow you can probably leave that the same if you want to disable your spawn egg um, you can ch uncheck this, but I noticed that it was staying in the actual uh, creative tab. So you might want to just go ahead and select no creative inventory down here. And uh, you might want to adjust the hit sound or the hurt sounds, living sound and uh, death sound. 
I just have it for metal break and stuff. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is under behavior characteristics, you want to set this to creature and uh, you might want to adjust your um, entity health to something a little bit higher than what it's set to. Usually it's about 10. Uh, this is about the same as a player, so you can set this to 20. And movement speed, you want this pretty low for uh, land vehicles. I would say no more than probably 0 0.2. Um, just because uh, setting it to 0 0.5 makes it go really fast and it's almost uncontrollable. So um, 0 0.1 is a little bit on the slow slide where 0 0.2 might be a little bit faster. We'll test that this time. And uh, mob drop, don't need it. And uh, the only thing that you really need to do is if you want it to be um, basically immune to any uh, particular damage, then you can check these boxes here. Make sure it's rideable and has forward uh, movement direction. You can just leave this part uh, disabled right here. Uh, you don't need it for an underwater entity or flying entity, so just make sure those two are unchecked. I just noticed, uh, yep, that's fine, okay. Uh, particles, you don't really need it. If you want to add it, go ahead. Uh, for the when entity dies, I have uh, set up a procedure for uh, that and an entity update tick. I'll get into those a little bit later. Uh, for the AI tasks, uh, I I don't have any actually. It's just a basic model that sits there. Uh, this is because there isn't anything that I really need to make this model work. It's just for basically controlling. So just leave the AI tasks uh, empty unless you want it to do some other weird stuff like, um, I don't know, like eating grass or something like that, restricted to sun. I mean, it's up to you how you want to program it, but uh, I basically like to have no AI to tasks for this particular project because it's just, you don't want your car running off into the distance and being a ghost car. If that's what you're going for, you want to make a ghost car, go ahead and make a ghost car, but um, I don't think it's uh, what I'm aiming for for this tutorial. So enable spawning, usually these two are checked. I suggest unchecking them and clicking save. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is uh, the item or the car spawner and it's just a texture. Uh, for the texture, uh, what you wanna do is go to your textures file and import a item texture. Uh, it's just the little diamond icon right up here. And uh, when you have your texture imported, select it. You don't need any other things uh, for your model, unless you want to make a 3D model, that would be pretty cool too. Um, and then all this other stuff is fine. Uh, you want to name your GUI name and set it to miscellaneous and set the maximum stack size to one, unless you want it a little bit higher and then that's fine too. But um, I usually have it at one because it's kind of like a one-time use type thing. So and you can set the creative tab as you wish. So that's all you need to really do. Uh, for the, um, the procedures, what I've set up is when it's right clicked, um, uh, when right clicked in the air, it's going to test for a, um, a three by three area uh, just at the current location of where it's being right clicked from, in this case, the air, and it's going to check to see if there's all air blocks there. And if it's true, then it can spawn the entity. This is just making sure that the entity is not gonna be spawning into a block that it can suffocate in. So that's just basically that. And then I have a um, spawn the, uh, remove the item, uh, spawn the custom car, which is our model. And uh, the last thing that we do is uh, just add a you know custom sound to make it sound a little bit interesting. Uh, you can find this way at the bottom of the, uh, the sound effects and stuff like that. That's for the villager toolsmith. It sounds like uh, kind of like a teeming anvil sound. And uh, the other one is for when right clicked on block. Same basically thing, only we're testing for air one block above, uh, same coordinates and all that other stuff. And uh, rather than, again, we remove the item, 
rather than uh, spawn the entity at the same level, what we're doing is spawning it at one block above, so it's not in the block itself. And the car model, obviously, that we're selecting. And then it plays the sound as, again at the one block above the location. So uh, that's basically all the um, procedures for this part. You can click Save. And uh, if we go back to Entity, I'll explain how the other uh, things are set up. So when the entity dies, basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically spawn a gem. So it's going to spawn the spawner item itself, and then what it's going to do is make a explosion <laughs> explosion sound. I don't know where I was going with that one. Um, yeah, so it's going to be an explosion sound, and then um, basically it drops the item. So very simple mechanics for that. And the other one is a little bit broken at the moment uh, due to the particle effects, but I'll do my best to explain how this all works. So basically we have created an MBT entity timer uh, for basically doing a clock update tick. And uh, what we've done here is test if the entity's health is less than five. Uh, our health for the vehicle is 20, so anywhere from 20 to zero it would be the health bar. So it's measured in half parts. So if it's less than five, then it's going to um, make it look like it has more damage. When this the particles and stuff are fixed, this is gonna work a lot more efficiently. So what it's gonna do next after testing for that, if it's true, is it's going to get the timer uh, variable for the MBT timer and see if it's uh, greater than one. And if it's true, then it's going to uh, spawn a whole bunch of different particles. Um, I've tried to offset it to fix the bug. It didn't really work. So I had to report in a bug report. It's going to play a few sounds and then it's going to reset the timer to zero. And if that's not true, then it's going to test if it's uh, equal to or less than 10 and for the entity health and then it's going to test if the timer is greater than or equal to 1.5 and then it's going to do the particles sound effects and then set the timer to zero and if it's uh the entity health is uh greater or less than 15 then it's going to basically do the same thing this time it's going to test for the timer to spawn a few particles less par particles obviously and then it's going to uh, set the timer to zero so basically what this would do is make it so the particle effects you know basically um, uh, do particle effects make sounds and then it's going to also uh, set the timer to zero so that's basically just a little advanced feature that I threw in here when I had some time so that would be under the update tick and then the other one is for the entity dies so when you have all that set up, um, you can test it and we'll hop in game and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so we have our custom icon for our car. We can not place it on the block, but if we place it in the air, as you can see, it spawns it above and then places it down. Uh, we can actually drive the entity. So as you can see, we've got that all working. We're in right above the grid place in the actual um, uh, workspace for block bench so you can see that's how it all works and if we uh, damage the item a little bit okay I need to actually hit it so as you can see it starts uh, shooting particle effects that's kind of the bug right now um, it's even with the particle effects really down low it's still going pretty fast so there's not a whole lot I can actually do to fix that at the moment. When it's actually fixed, it will look a lot better. And if we keep um, shooting arrows at it, as you can see, it's starting to play the firing sound, like the fire sound, like furnace, and uh, the smoke's a little bit bigger as well. And if we shoot it one more time, it will actually blow up, and then you can get your item back again. So that's pretty much how it all works. 
Uh, if you found this tutorial useful, um, definitely consider sharing it, tell your friends about it. Um, you know, comment down below, rate the video, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.